I need some traction. Click up. Do we have any click up users here? Oh, okay. That's not your marketing team, is it? No? <laughs> Over there as well? Nice. Okay. So most of you are not click up users yet. Maybe after this. Do um, you want to give us? Just a quick overview of what ClickUp does. And yeah, absolutely. So ClickUp is an all-in-one productivity platform uh, that brings all of your work into one place. So instead of using different tools and different platforms for your docs, your goals, team tracking, dashboards, you can do it all in ClickUp. Um, allows for visibility and, and really you know, collaboration in one tool. That was fast. Very nice. Um, should do a pitch competition. That would be good. Um, 100x growth. That's a lot. By throwing out the old B2B playbook, what was so wrong with that? <laughs> I, I think th there's nothing wrong with the old B2B playbook, but there was a lot of blue sky opportunity to evolve it. And I think my, my background, um, I, I didn't build my career in SaaS. I came from media. Um, really gave me this perspective that you could add a lot of value to a B2B brand, especially in a highly competitive space. I mean, we are in, next to CRM, the most competitive space in SaaS. So doing the same thing over and over, it, it, it wouldn't work. And for us to go up against you know, these $100 billion behemoths, to just simply follow the motions that had been built for us, I just felt like there was a really great opportunity for us to reinvent and, and build a playbook that, um, of course, incorporates all of the motions that you need to, to grow a company, um, but also really focus on brand and focus on building brand from day one and, and doing it early rather than playing catch up when you realize that brand is a differentiator that's going to you know, separate you from, from your competition. What does that look like for ClickUp? How would you, defend, uh, defend, how would you define the ClickUp brand? So, so brand for me is really everything that your customers, future customers, touch, interact with um, in any capacity, right? So the minute that you land on the site, the minute you're served an ad, um, the, the experience that you have on our social channels, uh, anything that involves that interaction is, is brand for me. So to build that and make it best in class and have it be differentiated and feel different and, and feel great um, was something that I, I wanted to set out to do immediately and, and build that North Star of having the best in class brand interaction no matter where you interacted, touched, you know, experienced the company and, and the product. That sounds so easy. We'll just build a great Super brand. Easy. <laughs> um, well, how do you do that? So I think when I first started, uh, I, I thought a lot about when I was at BuzzFeed, and I was at BuzzFeed very early. So the company was an experiment at that point in time, and we didn't know what would work. And we spent hour, hundreds of thousands of hours experimenting with types of content and understanding what would resonate with people and why. Um, and building the entire company was built on emotional connection and figuring out content that emotionally resonated with people. So when I started thinking about how do we build this brand that feels really differentiated in SaaS, it made a lot of sense to start there and think about how do people connect? You know, what, what is our persona in market? Um, are we, are we, you know, can we be humorous? Can we add a level and, and, and an air of humor to B2B marketing and, and position ourselves as that kind of like heroic jester, right? And I think a lot of that came from this experience that I had and in, in, in how people connect. And, you know, I, I, for, for every SaaS company that I had experienced, there, there are a few that are really great at, at doing this and they've added humor. You know, Webflow has incredible uh, tutorial videos where it's just the right amount of humor and, and I, I, I appreciate all of, all of that that went into building that. But I, I felt like there was this, this really blue sky for us to build something that, that felt that emotional resonance and what we decided to go with was that, that humorous angle. You know, we can, we can be self-aware and, and do humor in a smart way that isn't try hard, um, that can get people's attention. Yeah, because that's the risk, right? Humor can backfire pretty quickly. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's definitely a risk. And I think, luckily, I joined at a point where the company was early enough. I joined, we were between 60 and 70 employees, and we're 1,000 now. So some of the things that I did back then certainly wouldn't repeat today. Tell us more about that. <laughs> I'll tell you a little bit about that. <laughs> 
Um, I, a lot of you know marketing experiments and channels and things that I wanted to go into, um, including podcasts and audio spots and, and things that I knew where you know knowledge workers would be listening to. Um, we would run campaigns, and the messaging was an experiment, and we would add certain aspects of humor into it. Some did not land. I'm going to press you on that. Oh, What no. did not land? Uh, so we ran a uh, we ran an audio ad on Spotify, and uh, we we wanted to play off of the um, of the the notion of like you know work hustle culture. Uh, but we 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 had a, a a female narrator read it in a in a voice that. Didn't, maybe didn't resonate with a lot of people. So, you know, luckily we did that early on enough and said, this is not where we're going to head with the brand. You know, like we, we're going to add humor, but it's not going to go into that lane. Um, and then we really started to perfect our voice through um, both our, you know, outer home advertising that we went into and through our performance ads. And, you know, we, we, we definitely also tested the waters in certain areas that were extremely polarizing. And I, I think knowing that that is a risk um, up front and, and, and having the support of, of the executives at the company and understanding that that could be a potential risk um, is something that's very important when you're going to do an aggressive marketing campaign or something that you know, could be very polarizing. Sure. And humor worked for you, right? Might not work for everybody, but how does a startup figure out what their voice should be, their brand voice? I, I came in at a time where you know, the company had, been, had grown primarily through PLG, which is incredible. You know? And I think we were at that point where we could add a little bit of fuel to the fire. And if we're going to add fuel to the fire, why not do it in a way where we can add that personality and that humor through performance marketing? So you know, it's, it's basically a billboard in itself, right? Millions of people will see that ad. Um, let's make it special. Let's differentiate it. You know, it, it, Technology has become so democratized, and all of you, you know, know this. Like feature parity is is so common. Everyone can build something that would have taken five to seven years in a year now, in a couple of months. Um, so uh, for us to be able to differentiate um, through voice and through personality uh, was something that was really important. So we started doing that through performance marketing. We would create ad campaigns that had that humor in it, and, and we weren't just focused on you know, just selling features. We were selling the outcomes and we were selling the, the idea of, you know, productivity in a humorous and smart and funny way. And that's important, right? Because it's one thing to have a brand and a brand voice, but if it's disconnected, like I can, I can be really humorous, but if my product is, I don't know, something from SAP, it's not going to land necessarily. Yeah, and I think that's also, that's a great point. You know, I, I came into the company and I took the role because of what had been built prior to me. You know, I, I wasn't walking into SAP saying, you know, let's, let's create like humorous ad campaigns and everything's going to be funny. Um, that would have been, that wouldn't have been a good fit. Uh, but at ClickUp, you know, we, our, our CEO is very vibrant. He's bright. He's exciting. Um, and, you know, he shines throughout the product. And a part of me was like, this, this is really great because I, I see it in the product already. I, I see what could be built on top of that to add brand to it. Um, and, and that's what made it that natural fit. You know, people already loved the product. There was already a, a huge fan base around it. Um, you know, the colors of the logo, I, I didn't brand the logo. And, and, you know, that was a huge selling point to me because I was like, look how vibrant this company comes off as. Um, what, a, what a great way to just take that and, and run with it. Sure. I mean, logo is one thing, right? But how do you connect the product and the brand, even organizationally inside the yes. startup? Yes. So not a sales pitch, but um, it's really great using like ClickUp internally because we can see a lot of what the product team is building um, and we can see a lot of what they're working on. So we try very often to connect brand to product in many ways. I mean, there's so much overlap between the designs that we're putting on our landing pages that we're testing, um, but things that we would work on with them, you know, even like the, the experience of brand, it... Of course, it's around you, right? Um, it's, it's, it's my ability to rent space in your mind by being memorable. But the other parts of brand really involve the product experience. And you know, the, the beauty of how we kind of work is, is it works both ways. So we'll create something, you know, we'll create our, you know, our Nike splash. You know, we have this very colorful splash that kind of appears at the end of our ads. And our product team saw that we were working on this with our advertising and our motion graphics team. And they said, this is an amazing, um, this would be an amazing loading mechanism within the product. So then we worked with them to develop that loading mechanism, which then carried through to other aspects of, you know, actions that would happen when you, when you um, complete something. And the entire product should be celebratory, right? It's about completing work. It's about collaboration. It's about getting things done with your teammates. So 
adding that element of celebratory, her, you know, heroicism into it with that that hint of humor when you land on certain pages, when you import certain companies and you get rid of them. We have a couple of funny little graphics that pop up. Um, all of that should really connect to the brand. So that that's sort of how we incorporate it into the product as well. Heroic. That's a, um, what about? Building that product, though, in a way that, that, I mean, it's one thing to have like funny graphics and stuff like that, right? But do I need that from the beginning? It's like the, it's something I need right at my start? Yeah, I, I feel like you do. I, I think if you're playing catch up with, with that, you, you're too late. So I think when you're building the product and you're starting out, every little thing that you do matters so much. And it also, you, you see the response. So when I came in, we did these short little videos of our CEO as an onboarding experience where he is um, using a giant tweezer to make a ship in a bottle because he saves so much time using the platform. And I was like, this is just like a positive little, like nice experience that people are gonna come to the you know, platform, it's their first time, and they're gonna experience this onboarding video and hopefully it brings them joy. And we added this share mechanism out, out of it. And the responses that we would see on social every single day really like showed us the data that like this is people really enjoyed that experience so it was small things like that that we can incorporate into the product immediately um, that that gave us those signals that it was it was worth doing from day one but I think you know no matter what you're building what stage you're at like building these these smart small things into the brand that and into the product rather that users love and and, and enjoy and, and gives them you know an endorphin boost when they do it um, I, I think that has a viral you know you know, it has a K factor in itself. It's one thing to go viral, though, and then actually turn that into leads and, you know, getting that growth going. There's always a risk, oh, I'm humorous, there's funny ads, but that doesn't necessarily turn into users and, and revenue in the long run. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's a flywheel, right? So there's, it, we're not just putting billboards up. It, it, we have our, our motions. We have now a sales-led motion. We have a self-serve motion. Um, but, you know, it, it really does convert. And I, again, it's a lot of it is, hey, how do we rent that space in people's minds and then serve them ads that make sense for them when, when they're at the stage to buy? Can you talk about that a little bit more? Because measuring the ROI of a brand is, is kind of hard, right? It's like I spend... I don't know where 50% of my advertising money goes, right? I know half works, but yeah. How do you, how do you measure that? How, how are you doing it internally right now? You mean you can't measure dollar for dollar billboards? No, maybe not. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of ways we measure it. Of course, there's you know the, the qualitative survey methodology um, that we do, where we'll measure you know this is specific to billboards, where we'll measure it in certain markets that we're running versus other markets where we have a blackout, um, and it's over periods of time where we can tell has our brand awareness increased, um, has the traffic increased. So you know there are there are metrics we're able to to measure. The other piece is you know we're incorporating a lot of our, our brand persona and our personality into the performance ads. So, you know, there's direct metrics based on how are those performing. If they're not performing, we're, we're pivoting and we're killing them immediately. Um, so, I mean, it's very, very clear. And I think that's, that's the beauty of it. Brand isn't just something that's just like general awareness. You can build brand through every aspect of that. Um, and you see, it in, you see it in customer tickets. You see it on sales calls. You know, in chorus, people mention, oh, I saw that really funny ad. We get people writing in, hey, can you send me that ad? I've I've never seen that happen ever. Like people are asking, hey, you didn't list your ad on YouTube. Can you send it to me? Because I want to send it to my boss. So, you know, obviously there's, we're not like documenting that in Salesforce, but I'm taking screenshots of that. And when I have to put a presentation together of like, hey, is this working? It's like, look at all these, these you know, look, look, look at the qualitative data too. Do you say billboards? Billboards. Like on the street, billboards? Here. Buses, airports, yeah, all, all, all out of home. Yeah, I um. I'm a huge believer in it, and I think it comes from, I, I lived in Manhattan for a really long time, and when you're stuck on the subway, uh, sometimes your phone doesn't work, sometimes you're just like, you know, thinking, and what do you do? You look up. And uh, the ads that kind of stuck out the most to me always were the ads that I would see on the subway stations and platforms because those are the, it's like kind of the only moment in time when you're away from your work and away from your day where you're not distracted and you're thinking about them. Um, and I was like, we, we have to incorporate that into our strategy. And again, you know, we're in such a hyper competitive market that our ability to be next to our competitors 
physically next to our competitors, um, an out-of-home strategy made a lot of sense. Sure. Now, most startups at, at your stage here are probably not yet thinking about billboards, but um, are you actually anybody here doing billboards? Nope, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> oh, one company over there. We'll talk about that later. Um, what about, so a lot of companies, the first thing they think about those kind of content marketing and SEO and those kinds of things, right? How do you think about that? Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, I think it's, it's table stakes to have an SEO and content strategy. Okay. What, I, what I do believe in, though, is that you have to be now hyper niche because just creating a blog is not going to generate the millions of web views that it once did. So you really have to be smart about what your, what your SEO to content strategy is and start going hyper-verticalized, um, but in, in a very strategic way. I think there's other SEO plays, too, um, that aren't just based on, on blog content. We're, we're exploring those as well. But I think it's important from day one. It's just figuring out what your angle is there, because just writing a blog is, you know, unless you're, you're a giant company that owns all the SEO, you're, you know, you're not going to really have a shot there. All I do is write blog posts, so I feel a little bit bad now. But um, <laughs> what about other channels? Um, you know, when I think about B2B, I, I, when I think about marketing channels today and influencer marketing and yeah. things like that. Yeah, that's ab absolutely. I mean, I think influencer marketing, um, I've seen more B2B companies use it. I, I, I think it's a brilliant way. I also think that <laughs> you can turn your internal employees into influencers. And I believe in that m marriage of external influencers and internal influencers. The, the people of your company, they represent your company. They can speak to really interesting things happening within your company. And if you build them up and you build their profiles up, um, you know, you're going to have a lot of reach, a lot of reach that is organic reach because you're not going to be building it from a brand page. Um, we did this at Cheddar. We, we, I think LinkedIn, like maybe we broke LinkedIn, but I don't know if you've ever seen these gadget videos that used to appear on LinkedIn all the time. And it was like, you know, these, these bizarro gadget videos. And they were posted by a man named John Steinberg, who was the, the founder of Cheddar, our CEO. And instead of building our brand channel, we realized that we would have way more reach through John. So we built an entire media channel out of him. He was the media channel. Um, and it didn't matter. People didn't care that it was coming from John. And he, you know, we, we racked up millions and millions of views. So I think you know, thinking strategically about like, how do you turn people internally into influencers as well as partner with external you know, a subject matter, matter experts, I think that's the marriage you should look for in your influencer strategy. Sure. And LinkedIn you know, is one thing. What about TikTok? <laughs> oh, I thought I heard it. Yes. <laughs> I thought so somebody was excited really excited about TikTok um, over there. You know, there. I, I, I think everyone should start trying to figure out what the TikTok strategy is. Do I, am I fully confident that TikTok is like the marketing channel of the future? No, I'm not. Especially for B2B, right? Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, the answer is everyone in B2B is now paying attention to it because they're supposed to. But honestly, like three months ago, every, or this longer now, but, you know, six months ago, everyone was like, you have to have a clubhouse strategy. Right? So anyone that poured hours and hours and resources into Clubhouse should have waited three months. Um, and I, I don't know if that will happen with TikTok, but, but some of the things with the algorithm that I'm seeing now already are signaling to me that there's going to be a big shift in, in, what, in the way that you're able to market organically on TikTok. Sure. We'll stream this on Clubhouse and see who watches. <laughs> it's, uh, listens. it's not streaming on listens. Clubhouse? Yes. What's next? Like, we've got all these, these motions now. But what are you thinking about this? Because you want to be forward looking, right? What, what comes next? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're hyper focused on building the next phase of the product, which is really exciting. And I think it's, it's really, it's up leveling the brand. It's telling that story. It's, it's telling the story of how ClickUp really brings people together to work together collaboratively, but in a fun way and making that experience fun. I think like, you know, ClickUp, thinking about ClickUp as that record of truth of all of your life's work is really exciting to me, and a, like you know, something like a, a Spotify Wrapped. Um, what if you could have your your life's work as a, a a document that you could share out with people, rather than just a LinkedIn you know portfolio or a LinkedIn profile? I think there's a lot that we can do there within the product, with externally that can create you know a viral coefficient there. Um, but there's so many exciting things that we can do with just you know people's ability to share out what they're accomplishing. Um, that I'm really excited about building brand and in, in the capacity that it tells that story and allow people to build their own kind of private brand that way? Is that what you're thinking about? 
I, I think so, yeah. I think if we can enable and empower people to build their own brand through the work that they're doing on our platform, then, then you know, we've won. That's the ultimate goal. It's really for, to empower people, make them more efficient, and make them feel proud of what they've accomplished, and to be able to see it. Um, and to do that in a really cool and fun way, I think, really will help them build their own personal brand, empower them within their own industries, their own companies, as founders, to be their own media channels. You know, there's, there's so much that we can do there. So I mean, I'm very excited about that. Awesome. Hopefully they're humorous about it, but not too much. A little humor. You're heroic. <laughs> and a little bit of humor. Awesome. We're out of time. Oh, no. And we can't go over, because so otherwise bad. Lloyd will come <laughs> out and complain. So thank you very much. Thank you so much. I need some traction. You need some traction. Let's get some traction.